Today, I'm going to be giving you an overview on how to construct the RDZ-01 Silverstone Raven case. Uh, it's a mini ITX gaming case that can support a full-length graphics card. Uh, the build was a bit more challenging than I was expected, which is why I wanted to make this overview and show you how to construct this. Uh, I'm also going to go over the parts that I chose, why I chose them, uh, and just give you some overview as to how to put together a case. Alright guys, now I'm going to be going over the parts that I have chosen for my build. Um, full disclosure, I have already constructed this computer and I've been using it for several weeks now, but uh, I became aware of the need for a build guide to, to come up. So uh, we have the aforementioned RVZ-01 Raven case by Silverstone. Mini ITX gaming case supports a full length graphics card and it's about 4 inches wide by 14 inches um, long by 15 inches high. So it, it's a little bit wider than a 15 inch laptop it, and it's much thicker, but it's, it's what I need for the small form factor because I will be traveling overseas. So that's the case box right there. For the motherboard, we have the AS Rock B85M ITX case. Um, the reason I chose this motherboard was because it has USB 3.0 headers, which the RVZ01 has two USB 3.0 ports on the front um, and this was about the cheapest that I can get with getting the USB 3.0 headers on a mini ITX case for for the socket that I needed. So that's that's the motherboard, the AS Rock B85M. For the for the processor I went with the Intel i5-4460. Um, the reason I chose this one was because of all the reviews that I read it was the best price per performance based, um, especially for single core. I know that a lot of the AMDs um, at, at good price levels, they have a lot more cores, but I needed more of the single core performance that Intel has to offer. So 4460, um, that's what I went with and it was, it was a decent price for it. Um, for the RAM, I don't have that out here. I got two sticks of the Team Vulcan 1600 megahertz, uh, four gigabyte sticks. Uh, so for eight gigs total, that's because the, the, cape, the motherboard itself only has two DIMM slots. Um, and honestly, it was on sale. It was only like 50 bucks for the RAM. So that's what I went with. Um, for the power supply, what I went with is the Silverstone SFX, SFX 450 watt small form factor power supply. Um, I really think that Silverstone is the only manufacturer of this type of form factor for the power supply and that's because they make it specifically for their cases. Um, I couldn't really find another manufacturer. They did have uh, a modular power supply. It was a little bit more than I was willing to spend on it. Um, although in retrospect after building the case I really do wish I had gone with the modular power supply. So the 450 watt for the graphics card, I went with the MSI Mini ITX R9 270X, uh, and that's because, uh, well, first off, this is a Mini ITX uh, graphics card, and let me just pull it out for you guys. While the case does support full-length graphics card, I went with the, the Mini um, simply because of the price. I, you can see that this is a, a small form factor. The price was, it was $30 cheaper uh, because it was like a Black Friday sale, so I ended up getting a mini ITX even though I didn't have to. Um, and again, I went with the, the 270X just because of all the reviews I read, it's at that sweet price point of the best performance per dollar value that you're going to get. Um, other than that, what we have uh, for my boot drive, I'm going to be using a Crucial MX100. It's 256 gigs for an SSD. I also got uh, the, an OCZ ARC 100 on sale for like $15 after rebates. Um, so I have two SSDs in there, not going to be running them in RAID, just have the extra storage. Um, and then for an optical drive, the, the RVZ-01 does support a slim slot loading uh, DVD drive, however the only manufacturer of that is Silverstone. And due to the price, I just wasn't willing to go for it. I got an external one for about $15 after rebate. So it's not, it's not anything special, but it gets the job done for playing DVDs. 
Um, now, as far as building the case, what, what I'm going to be using is just a, a standard multi-bit screwdriver. Um, just it's basic screws. Then I also have a magnetic screwdriver because there are some parts of building this case where you, you don't have as much room due to the fact that it is, it is a smaller case. So needed a magnetic one because I did drop the screws a lot during my first build of it. And then I also have a wrist strap that um, grounds me. I'm probably going to be wearing it around my ankle that way it doesn't interfere with my hands. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so here we have the Raven case itself. Um, pretty, pretty slim as you can see. Um, what Silverstone does include with it, it has several um, rubber stands that you can attach uh, for these like circular ones that um, just allow it to lay flat like this. Um, but then it also has these ones that you can stand it vertical um, and it allows it to, to be vertical and get more, more of the airflow that you might want for the case itself. Um, what they also include with it uh, are two fans, case fans, um, one on either side. They have them pre-installed, but you, you can install them on either of the three fan slots that you have. Um, another cool thing that Silverstone does include with these are the um, fan filters that are magnetic and attached to the outside, if I can get them to attach magnetically. There we go. So you just attach them, they collect all the dust, um, don't allow any of the dust to get in your machine, which is rather helpful. Um, and then also for, for the case fans that are actually on the inside, Silverstone includes a case fan splitter. Uh, to attach to the mother motherboard, um, which is very handy, especially on ITX cases because they don't, or motherboards because they typically don't have more than one fan header besides the CPU and a chassis fan. Um, so I'm going to be walking you through as to how to first uninstall because Silverstone has everything put together. You have to uninstall it, install your parts, and then put everything back. But the, um, but if you ever get lost anywhere along the way if you have this particular case silverstone does include a, a very nice manual it is helpful for trying to figure out your way um but really it's only like one word sentences for each step and i had to figure a little bit out myself so that's why i'm making this guide so with that let's get started so we're going to start off with disassembling the side panel for the case uh it just has two basic Phillips screws, you gotta take off, take them off. Alright, so I'm gonna set those aside. Take off the side panel. Um, you have the case fan with the case fan cord. Alright, so now on the inside, what you're gonna see here, um, let's see, a lot of wires. Uh, as you can see, I mean, there's not a whole lot of room in this case. Um, they made it as compact as they could uh, to get everything that you need in here. So you have the USB 3.0 headers for the front USB ports. Um, this is for the front audio, HD audio. Then you have all of the motherboard connectors. And this is, this is neat. So what you have right here is this is um, an adapter that goes to the power supply since the power supply gets blocked off um, inside the case and it allows it to be routed all the way to the back. So the cable goes from here to here and allows you to get power to your power supply that way. Um, with that, uh, let's, let's go through what exactly we have here. Here is a mounting uh, bay for a three and a half inch hard drive. Under that is where the power supply goes. Um, this is how you can fit a full size graphics card into the case itself because it's a 90 degree angle riser that comes off off the motherboard and supports the graphics card over here. Um, these two slots right here are for two and a half inch drives and this right here, this piece of metal is also for a two and a half inch drive. So you, in total you can get uh, three two and a half inch drives, a three, uh, three and a half inch drive. Um, and then I've also read that you can install some sort of radiator for water cooling in here, but I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, I'm not going to be overclocking. I'm not going to be doing anything extensive. Um, and with running uh, this computer for several weeks, my temperatures have barely gotten above 50 degrees Celsius with, with just this standard air cooling, and that's at max load. So I'm not really worried about heat at all. Um, 
And with that, uh, let's get started on what we need to break down. Right, I'm going to begin by breaking down uh, the inside of the case. Uh, basically, you can just take everything apart that's inside before you start putting everything back together. Um, so I'm going to start off by taking the motherboard standoff screws off. Um, then I'm going to disassemble the hard drive cage, which is also where you store the power supply, and then I'm going to get rid of this assembly, take it all out. So, magnetic screwdriver, just to unscrew the motherboard standoffs here. Set those off to the side. There's just four of them, they're not really too, too arduous. Alright, um, now I'm going to take off the hard or the video card assembly. It's just these two screws over here, these screws over here, and then two more over here. So six screws in all to get the video card assembly dismantled. This part itself right over here gets, um, it attaches itself to the two and a half inch drive slot. All right, so that's all unscrewed. This just kinda, just kinda comes off like that. Um, again, you can see the motherboard riser. Um, it brings it out, takes a 90 degree angle, and you put your graphics card in here. But I'll show you more of that in just a little bit. Um, Next, I have to, uh, I'll take apart the two and a half inch drive slot right here. Just two screws that attach it to the case. As you can see, it's a tight fit as far as how, how much space you have in between where the screw goes and then also the case fan. So just getting rid of that. My screws seem to be a little stubborn here. All right, so this also is attached um, a little bit right there. All you have to do is just give it a nice tug and it should just kind of come off. And again, you attach the two and a half inch drive here. Um, last is the hard drive slash power supply case. Um, and the hardest screws in this entire case to get are the ones that are over here because the all of the front panel connectors and the motherboard switches and everything is over here while you have to screw it which is again why the magnetic screwdriver is really a necessity with this build because I've lost quite a few screws trying to do this and by loss I mean dropped all right that one wasn't too bad it's it's really actually getting them back in to screw them back in is the hardest because you have to bring the screws down and gravity works against you there. So now that we have the, the case itself disassembled, what we can go ahead and do now is start reassembling it again. Uh, I'm going to start with the power supply. As you can see, this is a very small form factor. This is about half the size of a regular power supply. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and install. It, it basically just slides right in uh, pretty pretty nicely. Just sliding it right in. The screw holes line up on it, and essentially you just screw it right back in after that. Um, all of the all of the screws that you need are obviously included in the included with the case itself. Um, all of the motherboard standoff screws that you need. All of these screws. Not oh, man. Magnetic screwdriver works wonders here when they can't stand. All 
All right, now that we have all those screws in, I'm just gonna attach a three and a half inch drive to the top casing here, um, just to kind of give you guys an idea of how that works. Um, and Silverstone in its manual does suggest that you install this prior to uh, putting this back, um, just because once you install the power supply bracket in again, you lose uh, the ability to get the screws on this side. So I'm just gonna screw this back in now. There we go. All right, this is where having labels to your screws would be really advantageous, but unfortunately I did not think that far ahead. Okay, now we're going to install the motherboard into the case, um, and then after that comes the power supply. Um, but first, need to put the I.O. shield, input-output shield, on the side of the motherboard right here. It comes with your motherboard, and it simply just kind of uh, pops in. As so, just apply gentle pressure, pops right in. Okay, so now if my lovely camera assistant would come a little closer. You can see you have the standoffs for the motherboards right there. Just gonna make sure to additionally ground myself. Um, take the motherboard and position it over the standoffs and then also in accordance to where the IO shield has everything. So you kind of have to push it against the IO shield just a little bit to make sure it lines up with the the screw standoffs. Um, now I'm just going to screw all of that back in, which is these screws right here. All right, and it, again, it's just four different screws, so it's not too hard. That part's not too bad. Um, now I'm gonna take the Team Vulcan RAM four gig sticks, and then I'm gonna put them in the, the slots. Uh, all you have to do is just make sure that these slots right here line up with the slots that are in the actual port itself. And then you just apply pressure on either side, make sure they click in. Do that with both of the sticks. One, there's two. Okay, so now that we have that installed, I just want to go over um, some of the ports on the motherboard itself, what we're going to be using, um, and some of the challenges that come with the case itself. So right here we have the power for the motherboard. This is the, the large 20 plus 4 pin connector on the power supply. Here's for the USB 3.0 headers. This is the front panel for the, the lights, um, for the power switch, uh, and all of that. This is the PCI Express slot for the graphics card itself or whatever other thing that you need a PCI Express port for. This is the CPU fan. Um, as you can see, there's a CPU fan port right there. Apply that there. Right next to it is a chassis fan support, which again, um, Silverstone includes the fan splitters for the two case fans that you have. Other than that, you have the SATA ports. Uh, it has two SATA 3.0s and two SATA um, 2.0s, um, which these are the three, these are the two. Um, and since I have two SATA 3 solid state drives, that'll be fine. And then right over here in the very tippy corner of the case, you have the power for the processor itself. Um, and then over here you also have the front audio, but that's uh, negligible. Alright, so now we're going to drop in the, the power supply right here. Um, and really the issue that I have here is that these cables would, would be best managed if they went up and around. 
but the issue you have there is that this comes up to the very top of the case so you can't really get the cables managed very well at all. They're pushed up against this side with the power supply and you can't really wrap them around the other way. Um, so they're just kind of left hanging out after that. Um, so that's, that's my only real gripe with this case is it could have just, I don't know, a little bit more flex room like half an inch would, would give you enough to, to route those cables appropriately. Um, so first, in order to get the power supply installed, you have to plug in the adapter into the slot right here. And this also goes upside down, which isn't fun. There we go, that goes that way. All right, so you have to make sure this cable is flush against the side walls as well as you have to get it down below this threshold right here in order to make sure that three and a half inch drive fits in appropriately so just takes a little bit of not necessarily effort you don't want to brute force this especially since you're potentially rubbing it up against the motherboard but there we go um, kind of clicked into place there. Oh, one more thing before we, we even get into this. Um, let me take this back out. So, on the power supply, you have the on and the off switch. Make sure you turn the power supply on before you install it, because once you install it, you don't have access to that switch anymore. Uh, and I didn't do this, I made sure to turn it on, but don't go through the hassle of having to uninstall it afterwards because you didn't flip the switch. So, have it on. And now, I'm just going to reinstall it again. Alright, now that that is installed, it is time to screw it back into place. I'm going to go ahead and get the hardest one first. I actually could really use a flashlight, um, but I can manage mainly because I'm casting a shadow on what, where the hole needs to go. And there goes the screw. Baggots. Very handy. So the issue that I'm running into currently is that the cable is slightly overlapping on the hole for the screw. I'm actually not going to do the hardest one first, so I want to make sure everything's positioned appropriately first. And actually, when I first did this install, I did not have a magnetic screwdriver that was long enough, so I just decided not to screw this back in because I kept losing it on this side. Like I do now, but actually recovery is a lot easier. Once again. Alright, this is the, the hard part. I lost the screw. Uh, you don't really want to shake a three and a half inch drive like that. Um, it's actually quite old, so I don't care too much about it. Don't shake your computers. I'm just trying to find this screw because I don't want it to get stuck under the motherboard and potentially short everything out. Um, I don't think it happened to drop out. You can stop recording. Got that installed, um, just had a little issue with the positioning of the power cable itself was preventing me from getting the screw in. Uh, so now, I'm gonna go ahead and install all of the cables into the motherboard itself. I'm gonna start with the CPU power. Uh, it goes over here. Although, probably wanna use the other one just for make sure it doesn't interfere with the CPU fan. Although, that looks I'll worry about the cable management in a little bit. Um, I'm going to use this 20 plus 4 pin adapter to 
to put it in over here. Like so for it goes that way. So there's that. All right. Again, the, the tight spaces of this make it slightly difficult to work in. There we go, that's installed. Um, okay, got all of that taken care of, what we have now. This is for the graphics card, so I don't really need that at this point. These are the Molex, don't need these at all, which uh, modular power supply, you wouldn't necessarily have to deal with that. Um, and this is the SATA power. Again, we're going to have the three and a half inch drive over here. And then having the two and a half inch drives over here. So I'm just connecting that right now. Also, um, what Silverstone mentions in their manual is that they recommend at this point that you install the actual SATA cables into the SATA ports themselves. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and connect that at this point. Uh, they include right angle cables, which is quite handy. All right, so just popping the SATA cable into the drive itself. And then um, since this isn't going to be my boot drive, I'm not going to put this on the primary, primary SATA port. Um, let's see. Just make sure these line up with the ports themselves. Just popping that in there. Again, you can see the cramped space and with all the cables that you might need for this, um, doesn't really line up too well. Um, all right. Install this. I'm gonna have three drives in here all together, so three SATA cables. Makes sense. All right, got those attached. Um, now, what we have are the reset switch, the HD LED, the power LED, and the power switch, um, which is all indicated on the motherboard. You just need to kind of go ahead and figure out which one is which. So power switch, power LEDs, reset switch. There we go. And then lastly, the hard drive LEDs. All right, got all of those in, as you can see right there. Then next, uh, what we have, HD audio for the front port. Uh, that is this guy over here, all the way in the far corner. Um, if you look on the cable itself, there is one where you, there is no insert hole. So you just make sure that you have you line it up with the one that doesn't have a pin. That's how you can tell which way is up. Oh, that worked. All right. And then for the two front USB 3.0, um, is this guy right over here. She is attached. Okay, so as you can, I, again, the, the cable management is, this, is a mess in here. There's really nowhere to store these cables. Um, there's not really any built-in options for cable management. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on the cables a little bit, and then we're gonna work on installing the graphics card. All right, now that we have the motherboard and all of its cables installed, we have the power supply installed, we're going to go ahead and move on to the graphics card installation. Um, and again, you have this whole assembly for the graphics card. Um, and it has the risers for it as well. Um, graphics card right here. You Basically, this works like a, a standard graphics card installation on any motherboard, except for this is your PCI Express slot right here. Um, so you just going to want to drop it in there, um, make sure it fits snugly, pops in like that, um, and then you're going to want to go ahead and screw it in over here onto the plate. 
so that it stays nice and cozy and doesn't shake around at all. All right, got that screwed in. Um, and then uh, how it drops in is, again, just like any uh, PCI Express slot, you're gonna drop this into the motherboard slot over here. But before you do that, what you're gonna, what you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is take the eight pin uh, PCI Express power connector and attach it to the, to the ports back here just so you have that taken care of before you drop it into the into the case. So now the power is installed. I'm gonna wanna route the cables just a little bit behind and under, um, except for having a little bit of trouble getting all this appropriately adjusted. Because you, you have to make sure that you're going to be able to screw it back in again to the to the two and a half inch drive plate that is in the middle of the, the case. So kind of routing it down and around is going to be the best option here. All right, looks like we have clearance there. All right. So just make sure that this aligns with the PCI Express slot in the motherboard. Push it down, make sure you're not brute forcing it and that you have it appropriately in and then just kind of get it down until you're sure you have a snug fit, which seems like we do. Everything seems copacetic over here. Um, and if you were going to be installing the the optical drive you would have had to done that prior to installing this whole assembly back that back in because the, the optical drive goes in in this piece right here um, so now that we have that taken care of what we're going to want to go ahead and do is reattach this or not necessarily reattach but just screw everything back in to all these panels over here so I'm just going to go ahead and Screw everything back in. Um, and when we had the camera turned off, I went ahead and I did reinstall that two and a half inch drive uh, plate that was right there, just to get it out of the way for the, the installation that's going on. So, getting all the screws back in now. Get that in. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do next is install the two and a half inch drives into the two and a half inch drive slots right over here. I'm going to start with my boot drive. Um, the, the MX100 does come with an adapter to get it up to the, the nine millimeter standard instead of the seven millimeter, which it comes in, but um, I'd just rather screw it in and make it secure that way instead of having that adapter in there as well. Just rotating it so I can get the screws to align since it's slightly thinner. Okay, sorry about that. Um, had a little issue with making sure that the screws were fitting for some reason. One thing that I forgot to mention that I really should have is make sure you pull out the, the back case fan um, connector before you install this because I forgot to do that and I had to fish it out with the screwdriver. So make sure that you pull this out first. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and install our last hard drive. Just slide it into place and screw it in. All 
All right, now that we've got all of that installed, we're gonna take the SATA, SATA power connector from earlier, um, try to route it appropriately to get it in a nice space um, away from all the other cables and just make, give the power connectors to the drives. Perfect. Um, I uninstalled the, the actual SATA cables because they were kind of getting in my way. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and reinstall. I actually don't need this, so I'm not going to do that at this moment. Um, install this guy. I want you right here. And then this guy. This one's long and kind of unnecessarily so. Uh, but I don't have extra SATA cables lying around. But if I did, I'd invest in shorter ones. That's for sure. Um, so that guy is installed. I also uninstalled the front USB audio. Um, so there's that guy again. All right. So. Officially, everything is nearly connected. Uh, case fan splitter. Just gonna go ahead and install that. All right, got that in. Gonna attach the the this case fan port right there. All right, and then the other case fan is on this itself. Um, so, uh, successful installation as far as I can see. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm just gonna work on the cables a little bit, make sure nothing's like touching the CPU fan, getting it rubbing up against that, make sure I can fit the, this on. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot of places to put the cables themselves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to get back to you on um, seeing if it works. Alright, so we went through the whole building process, got it all constructed. I managed the cables a little bit more um, than what you saw with a few zip ties. Just tried to um, manage them where I could. And now is the moment of truth. Although, uh, before I get there, there's one little uh, detail that I didn't mention while I was doing it. And that is with the power supply, you can either install it right side up or upside down. And the difference is where the fan blows out. If you install it upside down, the fan is going to blow into the, ca the, the casing for the power supply itself. If you install it right side up, it, there's a hole right here for the power supply for it to blow out. So just make sure you have your power supply oriented properly when you're installing it. Um, with that being said, now it's the moment of truth. Let's find out if she works. Well, power button works. Power lighting works. And we have the BIOS screen. Running Windows 8.1. I already had it installed, so there's no need to reinstall it. And... There we go, all the way to the home page. So, uh, went through building the RVZ01 case. Uh, slightly difficult, not, not so much more than, than a regular build. You just have to make sure that um, you know how everything goes um, because it, it would be pretty easy to get lost if you weren't actually paying attention to what you're doing um, or if you didn't have a magnetic screwdriver when you dropped the screws. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to be posting more reviews of other products that I, that I have. So thanks for watching.